So, uh, as with Heaton, my correct Twitter handle is there, Jenny T. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to build a fairer data ecosystem um, under the, the general topic of, of data for common good. Um, so, the first point that I want to uh, talk about is the um, data for the common good, what common good means is good for everybody, not just good for, say, the public sector um, or good for, you know, uh, us, us community type people. Um, data for common good means to me uh, a fair data ecosystem where individuals, communities, public sector, arts, journalism, and business can really thrive. Um, the way in which we at, at ODI kind of think of about the, uh, the value of data and how we get impact in, from data um, is through a very simplified kind of value chain, which I've pictured here that we, the people that really make a difference to the world are, de uh, are decision makers. It's when we make decisions as individuals, as businesses, um, as communities, that we really change the way in which the world works. And therefore, data for common good needs to target decision makers making different decisions in order to work towards a better place. But decision makers to make good decisions um, need to, we think, we, we think that data that is in, uh, that uh, decisions that are informed by data are better decisions and that we are able to come to those better decisions more quickly when we have data to back them up. And sadly, most of us um, who make decisions using data don't go and download spreadsheets and try and pull stuff apart. We're not coders. What the interface for us between data and the decisions that we make um, are the uh, applications, the services, the products, the tools, the articles, the analyses that um, what we call creators make. And that's where uh, really the, the, uh, the business community and the civil society can really play a role in making sure that the um, information that we have is delivered to decision makers in a way they can understand and make good decisions off the back of. Um, and the final kind of role within that data uh, value chain is of stewards. Um, so the people that actually hold data. Um, and one reflection that, that we have uh, at ODI is that um, we've spent a lot of time, particularly in the open movement, but I think it's also true in the, in the kind of my data movement, um, concentrating our efforts on getting stewards to be more open with data that they hold, to make it more available. And that's a good thing, we need that to happen, but we also need to have the, the organisations that are using data, translating it into things that people understand. Um, and we also need to have individuals, businesses, public sector using data to make different decisions. Um, and so the work that we do is not just about trying to change the behaviour of data stewards, but also the behaviour of those that are creating uh, information from the back of that data and those that are making decisions off the back of it. Um, just to make some of that abstract stuff more concrete, an example is an initiative that we have in the, in the UK that ODI is part of called Open Active, which is all about making da using data to help people get more active. Um, and this, the, the way that this works is that organisations that provide physical activities um, publish data about those physical activities and people who uh, are looking for something to do with their family at the weekend can more easily find activities that are going to be physical activities that get them fit, get them en enjoying um, being more active with their families um, because that data is made available. So the common good there 
is more people being more active, addressing uh, fitness, addressing obesity, addressing me mental health issues. That's the kind of common good, a part of the common good that we can see. Um, it's a common good for, from a public sector point of view because um, that means less spending on, on health, on the NHS in the, in the UK. It's an individual good because individuals are getting more active, but it's also a business good because making that data more available means that people are, getting, are partaking in more activities and they pay for that. They pay to take part in those activities. So it expands the market for the businesses that, are, uh, making it, that, that provide physical activities. So I think when we're thinking about data for the common good and thinking about a fairer data ecosystem, we need to be highlighting that it's, it's not just uh, society as a whole that benefits, it's also individuals, it's businesses as well. Um, now I'm going to talk about kind of two threats to, to getting the, the um, best out of data. Um, one kind of speaks to the, the data monopoly point that Heaton was talking about, and that's that um, one problem we find is organisations hoarding data, keeping hold of it, um, and using data, thinking of data as oil, as having a, a value in itself, that means that in order to extract value out of data, they need to have it themselves. Um, we think that uh, that doesn't lead to the best impacts for, for data because it limits who can make decisions off the back of it and it limits who can make those products and tools and services that actually provide for a huge amount of economic potential and growth. So one thing we think is important for building a fairer data ecosystem is pushing those data hoarders to be more open. Um, that means working on data as, uh, working on building a data infrastructure that works for everybody, um, working on creating capability across uh, decision makers to use data for making decisions, to understand how to use data in order to achieve their policy or business objectives, as well as providing a basic kind of literacy around data uh, for everyone. And the third thing we think is, is important is more open innovation and driving more open innovation to make sure that those products and tools and services actually get built and actually service the needs of the decision makers to make an impact in the world. Um, an example, again, just to show what I mean by being more open is the Open Banking Initiative, which we um, kind of started in the UK, but is actually a worldwide uh, uh, thing. We've been involved in it both in the UK, but also in, in Australia, in, um, in Mexico, trying to push this idea of making data from banks more open, more available. That includes some open data about products, about um, where ATMs are, about where bank branches are, but it also includes providing transaction data through open APIs to the individuals that those transactions, uh, that own the accounts that those transactions are part of. And that ties into the, the PST2 directive around um, uh, making sure that third parties can act, can, can make transactions on your bank's account. Um, so that indicated, that illustrated open data, open APIs, but the other part of open banking, at least in the UK, and we've also recommended this in Mexico too, is having open innovation as part of what grows that, that ecosystem. So actually pushing and, and subsidizing open innovation to create the products and services that are going to help everybody. The other challenge um, that we see more and more is uh, fear of data. Again, Heaton touched on this talking about um, what happens when individuals withdraw consent for data to be collected or data to be used, even when that use would actually be for a common good purpose. And, and we're quite worried about that, that, that um, if we have all these fears about the way in which data might be misused, then that might mean that we miss some of the good opportunities for, for data to actually make a good impact in the world. So we need to build trust. We think of this in three ways, of making sure that there's ethical use of data, um, of actually creating 
um, equity in the benefits that come from that use of data. And I think that some of the, uh, some of the kind of backlash against the use of data by the, the big tech companies comes about because of that feeling of inequity, that, that they benefit when we don't. Um, and the final piece is around engagement, that we need to really engage and properly engage with the people that are affected by um, the way in which data is used. And here for my illustration, this isn't an ODI project at all, um, but I just wanted to highlight the work that was done by an uh, initiative called Data Saves Lives in the UK, um, where they actually you know, create, had citizen juries pulled people into a room to talk about why patient data is so valuable for public health decisions uh, and, and um, educating them in the room through, a, through this kind of citizen jury process to get to the point where citizens could make informed decisions about whether data should be shared and whether there should be that consent for sharing for, for research purposes uh, of patient data. We need to find better mechanisms for engaging with people to um, understand how, how uh, people really feel about different types of data use, particularly as we recognise that the norms around use of data, what's acceptable and what isn't, are going to change over time. Um, and this is my final slide, so my take-home message. Um, if we're thinking about data for the common good, if we're thinking about building a fairer data ecosystem. We need to work on both of these sides in parallel. It needs to be both more open and more trustworthy so that we can get the best impact for everyone. Thank you.